All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Hallie Brook, who is in Colorado Springs in Colorado. How are you doing, Hallie? I'm wonderful, John. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And uh, Hallie is a nationally board certified nutrition counselor and health coach at Nourished Coaching. And what we're going to talk about today is something kind of very fascinating is your anxiety and depression. For those of you who get anxious, and that is pretty much 99.999, <laughs> if not 100 percent of people. And those who suffer from depression, which unfortunately is a lot more people than than probably you would even guess. Uh, but we're here. It's it's not a. Uh, your anxiety and depression are a gut problem more than a brain problem. So, yeah. Okay. Well, let's jump straight into it. Why is it? Why is it a? Why is it a gut problem? Because clearly, obviously, anxiety and depression, uh, most people would associate immediately with with mental health. Exactly, and that's how we treat it, right? We treat it with counseling, and we treat it with um, antidepressants and anti anxiety. So, there's two reasons it's a gut problem and not a brain problem. The first reason is that. 95% um, of your serotonin is created in your gut, not in your brain. So if your digestive tract, your large intestine is not functioning properly, your body's not creating the serotonin that it needs. And obviously serotonin is your happy hormone. And then the second reason is we're actually now starting to rename depression as brain inflammation. And brain inflammation is obviously caused by inflammation in our bodies in general. And we now know that the gut epithelial lining, so that little tiny lining uh, that makes up your gut, we know is one cell thick, which is crazy. If you think about the skin mm -hmm. on even the thinnest part of your hand, that's about 30 cells thick. So when you think about your gut lining is only one cell thick, that's super, super thin. And we know that most of the foods in our standard American diet or what we call our SAB diet um, cause significant inflammation and they actually cause those cells to to split apart. They're held together with, with, with what's called a tight gap junction. And when we get inflammation, they split apart. So now we have bacteria and food particles leaking out into your body. Sounds super gross. Also poop <laughs> particles. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah. Um, leaking out into your body. And what your body does is it attacks it like a virus. So now you have inflammation right. and we've got raging inflammation in our bodies, which means we have inflammation in our brain. So between our gut not producing enough serotonin and then our gut causing systemic inflammation in our body, there is your anxiety and your depression. Wow, wow, that's that, that that's amazing because we do know. I mean, nowadays, like I, I think most people at least are educated enough for understanding the mind-body connection, even though it's not, uh, even though it's maybe not reflected always in the way traditional medicine is done here. It's like like mm -hmm. we just talked. I mean, if I had a problem with my stomach, like I go to the doctor, or the the GP, maybe then get referred to a gastroenterologist or whatever it is. But if I'm suffering from depression, whatever, I go off and see a therapist or something like that. And rarely do the two actually communicate. Yep, exactly. Rarely, rarely do the two communicate. And even more so, um, rarely do people link those two together, even though it's the actual root cause. So a lot of times I'm a huge fan of Western medicine. It's important. It matters. It's really, really good. And a lot of time, Western medicine tends to turn off the fire alarm and just leave the fire going um, instead mm -hmm. of noticing that the fire alarm is pointing to something bigger and going after that bigger root cause. Mm -hmm. And then just um, the, the well, you mentioned the standard American diet, uh, just for a, anybody who's not familiar with what that actually is, could you just elaborate? Yeah, absolutely. So the standard American diet is you know, all the things that we love, burgers, French fries, chips. It's typically highly processed food, foods cooked in low quality oils that are really high in omega-6s, which are inflammatory, um, sugar, food that has a ton of sugar in it. A lot of people don't know that big food companies like Kellogg's, Heinz, um, they actually have chemists in their staff whose sole job it is, is to figure out how to make the food addicting. So, the high amount of sugar, the high amount of salt, you know, 
pasta sauce doesn't need to have sugar in it. It's just fine without sugar. Why does it have sugar in it? Because it's addicting. And so you'll go buy that brand again. So that's the standard American diet. Typically standard American diet, you'll look at your plate and it's mostly brown or maybe white. You're, there's not a lot of color. There's not a lot of vegetables. There's not a lot of fresh foods. It's a lot of meat, potatoes, processed foods, and high sugar. Yeah, and it's it's really interesting though because I do think that um, that is one of the areas where people struggle a lot with now is that whole area of diet because, um, and even if you're trying to educate yourself on diet, there's so much conflicting information, mm -hmm. and then you have some people. Like, I mean, I heard somebody recently was saying like, oh, you know, they started this diet and they're doing this like fasting and they're doing this and they're doing that and they're only eating this, and I'm thinking it sounds great. It's gonna, it sounds difficult to sustain. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> uh -huh. but, uh, good luck. Let me talk to you in six months and see how you're doing. But I think is there's so much conflicting information that it's really hard for people to understand what exactly they should be eating and what they shouldn't be eating and what's good for them as opposed to what's not good for them. Yeah, you're so accurate. Um, that's actually a huge piece of why I founded Live Nourished in the first place is there's so much conflicting information and exactly what you said, this person who's like fasting and only eating these things, it's hard and it's not sustainable in our lives. Our lives don't, don't do that. So, you know, we'll have clients come to us and be like, are you going to take my cookies away? We're like, no, we're not going to take your cookies away. Um, we're going to teach you how to enjoy cookies in a way that doesn't totally destroy your body. We're going to teach you how to how to eat in a sustainable lifestyle that will nourish your body so that you actually have the energy to do all the things you want to do. Um, because diets don't work. The diet industry is a $300 billion industry with a 95% fail rate. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, it, I mean, it's right up there with the uh, Bigfoot hunting one. You know, although, I mean, that's a hundred percent, that's a hundred percent fail rate, but you know, the diet industry is not far behind. <laughs> no, no, it is not. Um, um, one, one, one other thing too, um, Hallie, is I think what happens to people as well is it, it's not just the, 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 you know, the confusion around food, but what you mentioned earlier is I don't think they understand often the complexity of the of of our brain and how mm -hmm. our brain and body works together and that sometimes like you know if you are angry upset if there's a thing is going on sometimes your brain will distract you from those things by attack you know by accentuating something else that's happening in the body yep <clears throat> yeah, that's super accurate. And it works on the flip side too. The way we the way we think about things actually affects how our body functions as well. So this is one of my favorite research studies. It's called the Cups Cake Study. And I think I have to remind myself, I think it's out of Harvard, um, but I have to remind myself of that. So I'll get that to you in the notes. But um, incredible study, the psychology department and the biochemistry department paired up and did this massive research study. There were about 200 participants. They split them into four groups. Two groups were control groups, but the two test groups had the same diet. So they were fed the exact same foods, exact same number of calories. And one group was given a cupcake every day, like an average basic pink frosting cupcake that had fake research that talked about how this cupcake is full of vitamins and minerals and it's super good for you and all these things. And then the other group was given 100 calories of broccoli and given fake research that this broccoli is covered in pesticides and they recently discovered that broccoli causes cancer and all these things. Um, and they did this for a month. And then the end, they retested all of these participants' metrics. So they tested cholesterol. They tested the biomarkers of inflammation. They tested for uh, serotonin and norepinephrine, right? The things that make our mental mm -hmm. health function well. And what we would think from just a straight nutrition standpoint is that the people who ate the broccoli would be better off than the people who ate a cupcake every day. And it ended up being exactly the opposite. The people who ate a cupcake with a positive mindset had better biomarkers, better nutrient retention. Um, some of them lost weight or were able to maintain a healthy body weight than the people who ate broccoli, which is crazy. But the way that we think affects our bodies and the way that our bodies function affects the way we think. And we don't put those two together nearly often enough. Yeah, no, I, I, I would agree with you. And I think, uh, and I think part of that is we understand on, on some levels, like we understand, yeah, we should, we, you know, we should eat better, you know, for our body. We understand for, our heads, like if we're doing something, okay, get into a positive frame of mind. But like you're, what you just said is we don't connect those two. We don't connect healthy eating and healthy mind together at, at all. I would say I rarely do I hear that those two put in a combination. 
Mm -mm. No, hardly ever. It's so fun. Um, just over lunch, I listen to podcasts over lunch often. So I was actually listening to your last podcast, uh, your most recent one on CEOs and leadership and burnout. And mm -hmm. it's so interesting. There's a uh, quote from Forbes. There's a couple, but <clears throat> one of them, Forbes did a research study with a bunch of CEOs and gave them a health and wellness profile marker. And then they tried to coordinate their health and wellness with that CEO's business's function. And what they discovered is that the CEOs who ranked in the bottom level of physical wellness <clears throat> and mental wellness actually lost money in the next two years. The CEOs who were kind of in the middle earned money, but not a ton. And the CEOs who were in the top 10% of well-being, so nutrition, mindfulness, stress reduction, all of that doubled their profits in the next two years. And so it's just crazy when you think about um, like burnout from your last guest episode, <clears throat> excuse me, and the things that go into burnout and that go into running a company and, and being successful, it starts with you. Like you're it, <laughs> you're the company. And if you're not well, um, mentally, physically, emotionally, it's not going to go well. It's like the gas you put in your car. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's an excellent point. And, and it's the one thing that you have complete control over, I think as well is the fact is mm -hmm. how you show up, um, and, and your, your attitude and, and your, you know, your, your approach to everything. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about, okay, as we know, like, diets don't work but how do you how do you start on your journey towards better gut health yeah that's a great question so the first thing that you want to do is you want to be able to figure out what is working for your body and what isn't and most people are completely unaware how food affects them so one of the things that we do at live nourished is we have our clients do it's called a food mood poop journal I talk about poop all the time, super comfortable. Um, we So we have our clients write down what they eat. We have them write down their food and their, or sorry, their um, energy level and their mood immediately after they eat. And then their energy level and their mood two hours after they eat. And that two hour window is actually fascinating because you people see, oh my gosh, when I eat this, I crash two hours later and I feel horrible versus when I eat this, I'm, I'm good two hours later and I'm in a really good place. So that first step is just becoming aware of how food affects you. And the, the interesting thing is that it's different for every person. Um, we have clients who do great on kind of a modified keto diet. And we have clients who a keto framework is the absolute worst thing for their bodies. And part of the way that we figure that out is how their body is processing food and how their body's responding to it. So that would be the first step is just figuring out how does your body respond to food. And then the next step would say, okay, we're going to remove anything that's causing issues for about a 30 day period. If you think about, um, you have a broken arm, you put that broken arm mm -hmm. in a cast yep. and you don't do anything with it for six weeks, right? Like it just sits there. Yep. If you have a broken gut, you can't do that because you don't eat for six weeks, you die. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the first thing we want to do is we want to take out everything that could be possibly causing issues. So we, we do that food, mood, poop journal. We highlight what's causing issues and then we remove all of that and probably some other things too for 30 days to let your gut kind of repair itself. And in that process, we'll also add in, you know, some probiotics, some high quality probiotics, some um, L glutamine is a great supplement that kind of acts like a band aid. We'll add those things back in to coat and help improve the mucosal lining so that your gut can heal itself. Cause that's the cool thing about our bodies is if we give it what it needs, it'll heal itself. Um, and then yeah, I mean, just, just one, th no, just one thing I was just going to say there to yeah. the comment, cause I think it was a really important point that you just made a few moments ago was that, you know, you figure out the right combination for that person. And this, mm -hmm. and obviously that goes against, so you mentioned keto. So some people would say, <laughs> go on a keto diet, everything keto, right? Everything, everybody keto all the time, right? But it doesn't work that way. So that's what I just wanted to pick up on that thing about where you find the right combination for somebody rather than one of these one size fits all. You have to do this. Yes. I'm so glad you highlighted that. Yeah. That's the key piece is what works for you. Um, and then the other key piece of that is what worked for you 10 years ago might not work for you now because hormones change, bodies change. So, you know, someone who has been doing keto and then all of a sudden it's not working, that's your body going, 
this isn't working anymore. I need something different. And we get so locked in to these diets and these fads and well, everybody's eating paleo and everyone's eating keto and blah, 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 that people like outsource their ability to understand what their body's telling them. Oh, that, I, I'm, I'm really glad you just raised that point, uh, because I often talk about outsourcing your future to fate. That's when mm. you don't like proactively take take uh, take control of it. What you just said there exactly is you're outsourcing your your knowledge to somebody. You're yeah, you're just saying, OK, I'm just going to believe what this person says over there. Sounds good. Now I'm doing it all good. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's what we do. We we count calories. So we outsource our ability to understand when we're full to our phone app. Like that doesn't make any sense. Um, we outsource what's good for our body to what is trending on Google. Um, and yeah, exactly like you said, we're outsourcing our future to someone else instead of staying in our own body that is designed miraculously to heal itself to function well. And instead of listening to the source, we go listen to a bunch of junk. <laughs> That's not accurate. <laughs> So then how do you how do you help people like sustain because that's always the thing isn't it it's it's so and to your point though it's not just sustain one program it's, uh, it's sustain it and then evolve it obviously as as it needs to evolve but it does require it does require some discipline and commitment to do that right mm -hmm. yeah it does require some discipline and commitment for sure what we find is that when clients finally experience what feeling good actually feels like. Um, cause I would say probably 75% of Americans, if not more feel like absolute junk most of the time. Um, and so when someone as finally feels, Oh my gosh, this is what it's like to have energy. This is what it's like to not be in brain fog all the time. I didn't even know I was in brain fog. It one, it makes it way easier to not go back to those old patterns. And typically what will happen in a typical client journey is we'll get a ton of healing. They'll do really well. And then they'll want to try something that sort of wasn't on the list. And so they'll try something and go, oh my gosh, that made me feel awful. <laughs> and we go, yeah. yeah, cause it's not technically food. Um, and so a big part of it is having people experience that healing experience, what it is to feel good. And then they don't want to go back to that. So that's part mm -hmm. of it. Um, and then another part of it is just mindset. So we focus a lot in Live Nourish. We talk about four categories of food. And so we ask our clients all the time, um, by the end of working with us, the goal is that they would be able to make a nourishing choice 100% of the time. And that does not mean eating a salad 100% mm -hmm. of the time. So um, the four categories of food are energy, which is calories in, calories out. That's what most people think about because food is energy. It's fuel. But it's also information. So the information that you know broccoli gives us is a completely different chemical response in our body than the response that fake sugar gives us. Totally different chemical response. One triggers, you know, glycolysis, the other triggers an immune response. Completely different information. And then the third category is medicine. So food is the fastest way to kill yourself or the slowest way to kill yourself. So there are some times when you've got to choke down a quarter cup of kefir because it's going to heal your gut, even though it doesn't taste very good. And then there's some times where you don't need to do that, but having that mindset that it's medicine is really important. And then the fourth one, which I think the entire diet industry as a whole misses is connection. Um, mm. cause food is connection. It's connection to culture. It's connection to each other. It's connection to faith. It's connection to family. Um, and 90% of the people that I talk to, will say, yeah, I did great on my diet until so-and-so's birthday. And then I ate cake and it went all out the window. And so mm -hmm. the way we try to reframe that for them is, well, you choosing cake, what were you nourishing? And the answer is you were nourishing connection. So you didn't just fail at your diet. Um, you didn't just do something wrong. You were actually making a nourishing choice. And yeah. so one, how we make it sustainable is if you just want to feel good, you just eat the right thing because you feel good. And then two, <clears throat> you start to learn that food is so much more than just calories. And so you actually can make a nourishing choice 100% of the time, whether you're eating, you know, oatmeal or um, a burger and fries. 
Yeah, you know, it, it's it's such a it's such an important point, and and I think that is one thing that people often misunderstood is to understand is you know how difficult relationships with food can be. Um, no, myself knowing some um, you know uh, people who have come through eating disorders. Um, you want it's hard for people to understand like if you're a drug addict or an alcoholic you can remove yourself from drugs and alcohol you can't remove yourself from food you have to develop a new relationship with it mm, well said yep it's a relationship we have a relationship with food and most of our relationships are are kind of jacked up and we got to fix that <laughs> Yeah. And the, and the other thing, I think the other clue I always think is funny. It's like you see those ads uh, sometimes, those commercials where the guy goes like, oh, you know, pizza gives me heartburn. But thankfully, with this new medicine, I can eat it without heartburn. And I'm thinking, well, pizza give you heartburn. Probably then you should just doesn't eat pizza. I mean, getting uh, something to to mask the impact of it doesn't sound like that great an idea. Thank you. You literally just explained what watching TV with me is like. <laughs> These advertisements pop up and I'm like, I can fix that with food. I can fix that. That's fixable with food. I can that too. I can fix that with food. <laughs> Well, listen. Th this has been this has been fantastic, Holly. Thank you so much. Um, uh, all of Holly's information will be below this. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about uh, what you do and how yeah, and, uh, absolutely, and how you do it. Yeah. So um, we do functional medicine, nutrition counseling, and health coaching. So um, we focus on nutrition, but that also encompasses everything from stress reduction and relationships in your life, all of the pieces that go into making a whole nourished life. And you can book a free 45-minute consult with us on our website, which is www.livenourishedcoaching.com. Um, one of our missions is that 100,000 people would hear the message that you and I just talked about today, um, that there actually is a better way to live and it doesn't mean restriction. It doesn't mean you can't have a burger and fries because it's so important. So that's one of the things that we're trying to do. And in that, um, working on changing a thousand lives. So whether that means working with us directly or we have a membership program that's awesome, um, we would just love to connect with you one-on-one -on -one and, and help you walk that journey. Yeah, listen, fantastic. I'd totally encourage people to go to go check out Hallie and, and check out her work. Uh, as we said during the interview, there's so much misinformation out there that you really need to go and talk to somebody who can cut through it for you because let's face it, I mean, life's too short. It's got to save you a lot of heartache and grief along the way if you just, you know, find somebody to help you because it, it's it's such a hard thing and as we said maybe you get so much conflicting information and so you go into mm -hmm. the supermarket now and there's so many new foods and all of this <laughs> kind of stuff that you know you could really drive yourself crazy yeah well said well said <laughs> all right listen thanks again Harry. thank you all for watching and listening and i'll see you all again really soon thank you thank you john